Well, this game is, is more than just a sequel to uh, Everything or Nothing. I mean, we're taking a lot of the elements from Everything or Nothing. We've listened to the, uh, the reviewers and the, um, the critiques, and uh, we're trying to take a lot more from this game. Than, than we're trying to take all the best from Everything or Nothing and add it into this game. But this is definitely its own game. We've got what we call these uh, RPG light elements, which is a lot of customization. Um, equip your bond, we've got an inventory, we've got some uh, a new currency that we've added to it. So it's a lot more than just the everything or nothing. But, you know, we learned a lot from that game. The, the last few games of Bond have been, I just, uh, you know, I get the, what the game gives me. But in this case, the way you, you will equip your Bond is uh, I can go into a, an inventory screen now and Bond will be there in real time and I can change his suit I can change his weapons, I can put armor on, um, you know, all within reason and all within the, the Bond fiction. But, you know, my Bond will probably end up looking different than yours. You might be able to gold plate or nickel plate your PPK, you know, little things like that. Or things that have a lot of uh, gameplay, which would be I can put a stealth suit on. I can put a stealth suit on that's white that only helps me in the snow levels. Well, I think to, to make you feel more like a spy, what we've done in this game is we've added that focus zoom mechanic, which is, you know, not only is he a spy, but he is the, one of the best marksmen in the world. So this zoom mode and focus mode allows you to focus in on the character and pinpoint shoot. Um, and that will reflect back in the uh, scoring reward system. So that makes you feel a little bit more like Bond. And uh, one of the other things is second level, we teach you stealth right away. And we've got... You know, we went back, and, you know, stealth can be a little boring in some games. So what we did was we identified, like, five of, our, five of our favorite stealth games, and we took the best from those and then made the stealth mechanics feel more like that. And there are some places where you have to be stealthy, where you need to go up behind the guy and take him out, or else he's going to just warn a 100 other people. And there's a couple of places where we've got this great mechanic of uh, uh, there's a door, and there's a, there, you know, there's a camera, and we'll, we'll show you the camera looking around. And if I don't quietly make my way around that camera, and it's also it can hear you, I mean, you'll, you'll never make it through that door. So there are things that we're forcing the, you know, some of the stealth. But one of the big things is we're not going to force a whole level of stealth. You can play stealthy if you want, but we're going to have it sort of intermittent, where you, you as the spy go oh, wow, I better be stealthy here, you know, or, you know, it's, we want you to think like Bond. That's kind of what we're trying to do. AI to us is very important to try and upgrade in this one, and, and what we've done is we have three to four different types of, of AI characters. The first ones, and this is kind of the ramp up the game, you have the, you have the grunts, the easier ones to kill. They're still going to get out of the way. They're still going to, you know, peer over something and, and take some shots at you, but they're not going to be quite as challenging. Then we have a second tier that gets a little bit more. They're going to start going, hey, he's over here, he's to the left, and maybe work in squads a little bit more. The third are going to be very intelligent. They're going to, they might even throw like a smoke bomb. And now with a smoke bomb, I can't lock on to anybody. And then they move forward up on that. And um, actually one of the fourth ones is um, a commander. So we're adding a new type in the game. He's not a boss, he's like a mini boss. And he'll come in, he'll even have a bar over his head, you know just to kind of make it a little bit gamey, but you, you come in, when you see him, he's about seven foot tall, and we'll have different, different types of them. And you go, okay, I'm finding somebody a little bit smarter, and he's not even a boss. He's gonna be tougher. Um, there's characters, you'll see them in the game right now, they're, they're you know, putting their hands over the fire because it's cold outside. You know, they're, they're checking on things. We're really, really taking um, AI very, very important as an important thing. You know, we went back and we played all the Jetpack games, you know, and there's, there's a handful of them. And there were just some things about the Jetpack that just kind of feel, felt quirky. And, um, and so, you know, at first we thought, oh, we're going to have to follow the way Jetpacks were made in other games. And then eventually we just got to the point where we said, no, we're going to make this up. We're going to do something different. So it actually feels different and plays a little different and is, is easier to use than other Jetpacks. So instead of just vertical gameplay. You know, we have a whole level where it's horizontal gameplay in the jetpack. And um, we're making you get on and off. So there's some, there's some gameplay where there's you know, electrical um, 
electricity coming out. I can't really make it through in the jetpack, so I'm going to have to get off, find that place to turn that off, and then get back on the jetpack. So we're, we're trying to, um, to, to interrupt the, the, the gameplay a little bit. So we won't have a motorcycle in the game, um, primarily because, uh, you know, we didn't see a lot of, of Connery riding motorcycles. Doesn't mean that someday we might, might not do it, but we've got, okay, we've got the DB5, and uh, so that's going to be in there. We've got this pretty cool, uh, it's a very, it's an armored vehicle. And it's actually one that he takes over from, you know, from the Russians. And it's full of weaponry. And that's going to feel completely different than a car because the idea of that is just bashing through things, just, just shooting and blowing things up. And it's going to feel more like a, a buggy. We've got, uh, again, we've got the jet pack. We've got um, boats. So he's going to be in a couple different kinds of boats in the, in the game. Um, what else? Uh, the, the levels are really, we have a lot of variety. We've actually counted how much variety was in Eon, and we have a little bit more. Well, we've got gadgets in the game, sure. I mean, they, um, the one that sort of resembles the spider bot in this one is we have uh, something called the Q-copter. And what that is is he takes out this little copter and it hovers there. And now camera goes behind that, and now I'm taking the the Q-copter around, and he can fly into vents, it can go in places where Bond can't get to, it'll unlock doors, you can upgrade it to have explosions on, the explodables on it, so he'll be able to uh, blow things up, take out characters. We've got a laser watch, which can actually go through, you know, uh, bulletproof glass or something like that, and maybe blow something up behind it, or heat up a shield, an enemy is holding a bulletproof shield, it'll heat that up so he has to throw it down. Um, we definitely have some uh, pretty cool gadgets in the game. Sure, the multiplayer on this game will be a third-person um, head-to-head deathmatch. It will be from two to four players. And um, all the gadgets that you see in the one player will be in the third player, in, in the uh, multiplayer. And um, as well as the jetpack and um, all the weapons and things like that will be in there. And it's been a lot of fun. What, what we've been doing right now is having, like I said before, we have a separate team that's building this game. And they're here. They're working with us. The, they will have different levels. They're going to have some that are you know, we're, we're going to be in uh, Venice, for example. And it's pretty neat when one guy's got the Q-copter and he's, trying, he's taking it around a corner. And the next guy has got the bazooka. And somebody else thinks they're really smart because they're on top of the roof and they got the turret. But then it's the guy who goes around and he finds in the corner the jetpack. And all of a sudden he's rising above and, and going around and uh, it's just, it's really neat. This game definitely follows the story of the movie, but like I've said before is that this is a, this is a director's cut, if you will. Uh, we've got some new levels, we've got new characters, new vehicles, new gadgets, new weapons. There's a lot of new stuff in here. So you could have watched this movie a thousand times, there's still so much new stuff in it for you to discover. One example would be when they're in the Russian consulate. In the movie, you know, you go into one or two rooms. We're going to let you go into the whole Russian consulate. So, and we got a great new ending. He's, he's pretty excited about it. Um, you know, he's such a big star, but he's still, you know, he's really down to earth. I mean, he was really excited about it. When we first we showed him, we, what we did was we did a movie. Um, to try and get everybody excited about the idea. And so we showed it to him. And there he was in, in CG. And you should have just seen him smiling and laughing and going, wow, that looks good. That looks like me. And um, he's been adding to the script, helping with the script, saying things like, uh, well, James Bond wouldn't say it. He would say it this way. Or wouldn't I talk like that? And so he's been adding a lot to it. Well, we've... Uh, the Hollywood production values uh, were really important to Eon, and we're doing the exact same thing. We're, we're using, um, you know, our art director is actually an art director who's worked on the Star Wars trilogies. Um, we have people who are just dedicated to making incredible special effects. So I'll say, you know, I want that guard tower to, be, to blow up, and there's somebody who is just spending time making movies, figuring out how to blow that up. We've also got, we've employed um, a couple of major companies to help with um, Academy Award 
winning CG teams to help us with our opening movies and our opening credits once again. We've gone out and we've gotten some, uh, some big music people, uh, which we'll announce at some other time, to help with that. We've also gone out and gotten some, um, some other Hollywood talent that, wasn't in the, that aren't in the movies. We made up some characters. And we've added them into it. And, uh, you know, we've, we've learned from everything or nothing, and uh, we're putting a lot more into it this time around. From Usher Will Love is coming out in fall of 2005. It'll be on the Xbox, PlayStation 2, and Nintendo GameCube. Now, Everything or Nothing was a great game, but we planned to take this experience much, much further than they did. We were going to have more explosions, more action, more characters, more variety. We have a lot of upgrading. I mean, we're taking this, this game to the next level. The multiplayer is going to be bigger. Uh, the whole experience of this game is going to be, you know, just on the next level. Um, we want to get back those fans that played that game and that loved that game, but we want to add to that. So this is going to be a bigger, better game. <laughs>